Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the Break the Cycle website that you may be watching, looking at. I've been studying communication skills for 40 years. I'm a professional therapist. I'm learning all the time. One of the things that I have observed in doing a lot of marital counseling and family counseling is many people, if not most, don't know how to communicate effectively. They often cannot define what is effective communication. Can you? Could you tell a 14-year-old child, this is what effective communication is? Can you say why we communicate? I propose, after many years study and thought, uh, all people, infants, children, teens, adults, we all communicate to fill needs. That may seem obvious. Can you define a need? I'd say needs are discomforts. Emotional, psychological, physical, maybe spiritual discomforts. We like to get rid of discomforts. We seek comfort. One way we do that in the company of other people is to communicate. We communicate to fill needs. Um, have you ever communicated with somebody and gotten what you needed but felt badly afterwards? The second of two requirements for effective communication. One is both people get their needs met. The other is each person when you're done feels comfortable about the process that you've just shared. You get your needs met, you feel good about yourself and the other person and the process that you just used together. I propose that is effective communication. <clears throat> so what? One implication of that is if you're not aware of what you're doing, meaning if you're not aware of what you need, what your partner needs, and how you're communicating, you only have, in, in important communication, you only have one chance in six to have effective communication. How does that sound? Six percent. Um, one testimony to that gloomy fact is about half of American marriages fail either legally or even more of them fail or more fail psychologically. They stop short of legal divorce. A major reason is mates don't know how to communicate effectively. Um, quick example, I may get my needs met but you don't get your needs met. We both may get our needs met but I don't like the process we just used but you do. We both got our needs met. You like the process, but I don't. The only option for effective communication is I get my needs met, you get your needs met, I like our process, you like our process. That's one out of 16 options that you and I share if we ever get into talking about something really important. Minor conversations, you don't have to worry about this. So, the moral of the story is <clears throat> a major communication skill that everybody needs to communicate and parents need to teach their children is awareness. One of the things that's useful to become aware of is what, what are our needs? There are five major needs that cause us to communicate. If you can't name them, you can't pay attention to, if you, you don't know if you're communicating effectively or not. So use awareness to learn what your needs are, what your partner's needs are, and look at the process between the two of you when you're done communicating. You have one chance in six of having truly effective communication. Awareness can raise your odds. The other unspoken requirement for effective communication is that your true self guides your personality. That is the subject of lesson one in the Break the Cycle website. 
you can know both these communication requisites, needs, communication process, but if a false self is governing you or your partner, it's unlikely that you're going to have truly effective communication. Notice how that sounds. The moral of this story is, I urge you, for the sake of you and your descendants and your marriage and your family, study lesson one to free your true self to guide you, and study lesson two with the people that are most important to you to learn how to think and communicate effectively. Thanks for watching.